Rogers. I think it was unexpected. Caught everybody by surprise. Ballantyne with the block. 14-11, 6.55 to go in the half. Ricky Norton underneath. Darrell Walker back to Norton. Now Ballantyne from the left side. Too strong. Klein rebound. Taken down. Foul underneath. I think Brian. When he comes inside and the guy goes right over the top, Brian does, and uh, here he comes. Let's see what happens. That's goaltending. At the other end, the call was on Brian Williams, a senior out of Inglewood, California, his first of the night. And at the line, Joe Klein. is hitting 62% of his free throws. Charles Ballantyne will get a rest. Klein transferred from Notre Dame. He redshirted last season as a high school senior. He was a highly regarded prospect and recruit by Arkansas, but decided to set to go as a freshman to Notre Dame. Well, I tell you, when you go laying out a year, it helps you for that third time. Actually, you'll be a junior, but you have a sophomore in eligibility. 14-13. Houston still leads. Is now cut to two, cut to one. 6:34 to go in the first half. Alvin Franklin, the freshman, to Michael Young, junior number 43. Clyde Drexler, or Benny Anders rather, 33. Oh, nice move, but a little too strong left side. Battle for it. Anders moves around, gets it in. Well, a lot of things going on there. The referees are looking over to coach, asking him to help him, but I don't think he can. Anders doesn't play all that much. He's a sophomore out of Bernice, Louisiana. He's only averaging 5.1 points per game. They call him Mr. Offense down in Houston. And he's hit a couple now to get Houston a 16-13 lead. Ricky Norton, left side to Kerry Kelly, number 45. Now Joe Clyde, 35. 16-13 to 5.50 to go. Another turnover for Arkansas. Very hard to get the ball inside on Houston. They have the long arms, and they're back in there at the free throw line. There's Franklin hits one right at the top of the circle. And that is the largest lead of the night for the Houston Cougars, 18-13. The crowd almost immediately begins to respond. Press employed by the Cougars. Ricky Norton and Alvin Franklin across the timeline. Just kind of an annoyance. Every once in a while, they'll try for a steal. He won't. Darrell Walker, rebound again for the Houston Cougars. Anders, just a two-on-four break. Will he take it with no help? He does. He does. Benny Anders has ignited a sudden Houston rally. It's 20 to 13. Six points for Anders. His high for the it's season is 15. And a block on Anders. And he didn't give uh, Walker enough room. He is so quick. You have to give him a lot of room. John Snively getting set to come back in, and Andrew's getting a talking to from Terry Kirkpatrick and Donnie Shaverick, a couple of the assistant coaches. Guy's still sitting down. Now, what's happened to uh, Houston? They, they've come out to half court, tried a little press just to try to get themselves in the swing of things, hoping Arkansas will take a quick shot, hope to get them in a running game. If it gets in a running game, it has to favor Houston. Clyde Drexler coming back in now for the Houston Cougars, who replaced Larry Mishaw. John Snively has come back in for Arkansas. And he has replaced Ricky Norton. At the line, we've got Daryl Walker. He's one of two tonight, averaging 18 points per game. He's got five this evening. Did it like a veteran. By the way, I've got greetings to you from an old legend in the coaching game, Frank McGuire, South Carolina. Well, he is a good friend of mine. We spent some summer time together. Were you in a ball game with him? Saw him last Saturday night. He and his wife, Jane, hosted us for dinner at South Carolina Marquette game. What a wonderful man he is. Yes, he is. Man. Had a great career. And Abe, I know he and his wife are watching tonight. He said they were going to. And there's the shot taken from the left side by Lajuan. By the way, talking about South Carolina, and I don't want to detract from this game, but Bill Foster is back on the bench. They finished out the regular season with a win over DePaul last night, 20 and 8 for the season, and not a bad year. Bill Foster in the bunch. Underneath. Darrell Walker, whistle before the pass, and another foul call underneath. Those of you who didn't know, Bill Foster had quadruple bypass heart.
heart surgery back in December, missed 19 games, and he gets back on the Pines in South Carolina. 22 15. Excuse Those me. independent schools have a hard time because they have to win every ball game. They have no conference to win if they have a chance to go. It's as important game for Bill as this game is for Arkansas or for Houston. That's right. Walker at the line again. This one no good. Rebound. It's good. Surprised he got the rebound. The big guy didn't choose to jump that time. He had him screened out, but he, he decided not to jump. No one blocked him. Got him on the arm. A big turnaround. That is Daryl Bedford, a 6'8", 18-year-old freshman out of Smyrna, Georgia. Is he the transfer? Nope. Freshman high school player. No good. Houston ball. That's how big a rebound is. If they get the rebound, then they have no, ch no chance for the shot. There's a chance for a three-point play, which is a big turnaround. So screening out really a valuable asset to any ball play. 22-17, 4 19 to go in the first half. Alvin Franklin turns around, drives the lane, puts it up, scoring, but then Anders gets it back. What a move to the There's no technical on that. Coach Sutton's asking for a technical, but it's not a technical when you're bounced inside. If you get bounced inside, he gets hit right here. Which gives him a right to hang on the goal a little bit. That's the difference then, because he was hit? Yes, if he's bounced, he can hold on to the rim to save himself. Wasn't hit hard, but he, did, he was hit. Anders has been the spark plug after Elijah Wong got them off to an early start, but he misses the rebound, a free throw. Both teams uh, had trouble all year with the free throw shooting. Eight points for Benny Anders, off the bench. Into the corner, almost too strong for Daryl Bedford. He'll give it off to Daryl Walker. 24-17, just under four minutes. Pass underneath. Flying, rolls around. Elijah Wong. He needed to give him a little distance. He's right on his back. He had no other choice but to foul. He gives him a little fake, comes right down on him. Anytime there's a guy supposed to be a great shot blocker, if you just show him the ball, he's going to foul you. At the line will be Joe Klein, Reed Geddes, and Larry Mishaw check back in now for Alvin Franklin. And Michael Young is also back in the lineup. Joe Klein at the line is two of two thus far, and for the night, he's hit six points. Well, you're supposed to say smart times like, you know, they'll Put a point to this, missing that free throw. They're going to regret that later on. All that. A low scoring game, every point missed, every turnover will get you in trouble. Well, Klein hits two and cuts the margin back to five. We've got three minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the half. With our score, the top Barnhill Arena in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Houston with a 17 11 edge over Arkansas on rebound so far. And the field goal percentage has picked up a little bit 36 to 26 now. What's happened? The referee early in the game called some early fouls to let them know that there's going to be in control of the game. That's one of the reasons both benches have calmed down, the crowd has calmed down, and the players have calmed down because the referees took control of the game in the first two minutes. Lou Stooping, James Meadows, and Dale Ford, James Burroughs, rather, and Dale Ford are our referees tonight. And a tough task. Here's Gettys in the full court press employed by Arkansas for one of the few times tonight. Drexler across the timeline. We'll pull it back to Reed Geddes. There was no traveling call, though the crowd wanted one. Now a whistle underneath, away from the ball. <laughs> 35, Joe Klein gets the ball. The, Two the big guys ball. been going at each other a little inside. He's just trying to cut it down, cut out trouble for later on. Meshaw had nine of 11 from the field and 26 points. Larry Meshaw did back in January. He's hitting almost 60% and only 54% from the free throw line, but he gets this one. He has been kind of a quiet presence tonight, hasn't he? I haven't heard much out of him. He plays a quiet game. You very seldom hear a lot out of him. And his free throw percentage, sometimes he might hit 10 in a row, sometimes he might miss 10 in a row. He's a very quiet player, very unassuming. Leroy Sutton gets the rebound, 25-19, a six-point Houston lead. They have led by as many as seven. Double dribble. That's 
makes the call. Maybe well, happen to Raft again. Cougars, one of those teams that wear different numbers at home and on the road. I don't know why they do that, but they do. A long time ago, that was the way you're supposed to do it, but no one paid any attention because they wanted to be known by the same number both places or one quick gun. But it is confusing to have that happen. It's really confusing for play by play and analyst guys. It's supposed to be, uh, I don't know what it is, whether it's odd or even. No basket traveling on Walker. Well, for example, Reed Geddes is 44 at home. Take a look at this again. He's 45 here. There is a movement. Well, he walks nearly. He has a hard time. He's so quick. He has a hard time planting a pivot foot. And he tries to turn around without planting the pivot foot. And he does walk a great deal. Direct to Anders, who has eight points. He and Elijah Wan lead the team. In scoring in the first half. Geddes in the corner. Cross court pass. Anders will drive. Puts it up. Got it. Ten points for Benny Anders. He's a sophomore out of Bernice, Louisiana. You and I have seen him play a number of times. He's playing about as well tonight as I've ever seen him play. He's playing under control. He, has, he doesn't usually play under control, but he is playing under control tonight. I look for Dexter maybe to move out on the floor because he has a, a slower man on him and maybe take him to the basket. Shot too long. Michael Young rebound. Reed Geddes. One of the heroes of last week, last year's March to the NCAA Final Four. When he hit those 10 straight free throws against Boston College at the end of the game. Drexler off balance shot goes. Very tough shot. He catches the ball with his back to the goal, turns and shoots, has to relocate the goal. It's one of the toughest shots in basketball. The efforts of Benny Anders have led Houston to its biggest lead. Now they've got a 19 point margin, a 10 point margin at 29 19. Foul underneath. Seems like the big guy might have been shoving a little bit. Foul is on number 35, Joe Clyde. See if you can see it. Well, he's using his body and muscling him out. He really didn't need that much body because uh, Michaud is not that heavy, but he was crowding him a little. If you're going to foul someone, you might as well foul this one. At the line, Larry Michaud. 54% for the year. One of two tonight. And again, not good. Fine with the rebound. Under two minutes remaining in the first half. Cougars out by 10. John Snyder, number 25. Snively from long range. Gets it. Willie Cuts is getting ready to come back in, and so is Alvin Robertson for Arkansas. Robertson went out in the first five minutes with three fouls. Traveling ball. I'd say he's had two turnovers, a walk and a missed free throw. And I don't know what there is about us, but everybody wants to put him in the game. <laughs> Here he goes. He did take a little travel in there. He's so used to dunking. That's another thing about dunking the ball a great deal. There haven't been that many dunks, and you try to get to the basket, you need to put the ball on the floor one more time. Well, they had 131 dunks coming in. They've had a couple tonight. Walker, oh boy, did he do a great job of using his body then. You cannot crowd Walker when he hits the ball. Once you crowd Walker with the ball, he's going to go around you and give you all kinds of trouble. A terrific job, Abe, eh? shielding off, knowing the block was coming to foul. There he is. Once he does, he's just going to give you trouble. He jumped into him a little. I am not for sure that was a foul. It wasn't enough to be either way, but uh, they saw it differently. Third foul on number 41, Larry Meshaw. At a 10-point margin, could be cut to only five now if Walker can convert the free throw. First time uh, Ty's been off the bench tonight, but he got up on that one a little bit. Brian Williams comes back in for the Cougars now, number 55, and Larry Mishaw with those three fouls will go to the bench. 29-24, one point. Arkansas picking up a little. They're going to try to crowd them a little. They got their big guys out of the game. They have scored the last five points. Here's Young. Steele, Robertson. They can cut it to three. Snively. Walker. Baseline. Rejection. Foul. On Drexler. Well, I think he got him on the wrist, but it was an awful careless play on Young's part to start that play. Comes inside. Goes up. He got him on the arm. There's no doubt about that. Leroy Sutton goes to the line. For the year, he is hitting. Only 54% of his free throws. He's not the best at it. 
What's strange, they know that Arkansas is coming at you. They, they haven't made a basket outside, made one basket, but they're still going to get inside of you and they keep crowding. You cannot crowd Arkansas, you got to ease off of it. What had been a 10 point lead is now three with a minute to he go. Fouled. Walker. Walked him on the arm. Didn't mean to, but he did. Well, I like the point you made a few moments ago. I what these officials did in the early stages of the game. It looked like it was a circus in here, and they've really taken control of this thing. Well, you have to do that. It's just like this foul where he whacks him across the arm. It's not a big foul, but it makes you jump, and it's something you got to call because it's going, it could change the game around later on. And a foul is a foul, regardless of how insignificant it might be. Gettys is at the line, his first free throw tonight. Used it all, but he got it in. One of the best free throw shooters on the team and in the conference. Hitting 20, 78% for the year. Missed it. Drexler rebound. Drexler shot good. Failed to screen out again on the line. He was a good jumper. So that becomes a three-point play, and it's a six-point Houston lead with under a minute remaining. And he has two original starters in it. Ride the alley oop is a little too strong. Shot is up. Foul call. Walk is so quick inside. You have to just let him jump. You have to hold your line on him. If you go to him, you're going to foul him every time. Walker has 10 points tonight, and he's back at the line now. Williams draws his second the ball. It turns, he's going to turn inside. He has three guys around him. He comes to you. It's very difficult not to go to him just a little bit. Once you do that, you're going to get caught. Walker at the line, 46 seconds to go. Nice smooth shot. Talked about that home game edge here, the home team edge, 100 victories and only six defeats. You realize that is better than the record posted by Kentucky, UCLA, Louisiana, North Carolina, Indiana. Yeah. David Cass Stevens of the Morning News did some research on that, came up with that stat. They've got one of the best records in the country at home over the last nine years. 35 seconds to go. Houston leading by five, 32-27. I thought Arkansas made a good move when they came out and started pressing. Houston pressed and got ahead, so Arkansas just turned it around on them, and that's how they got the five points marked off the board. In that first game the two teams played, Houston hit 56% for the game, and Arkansas only 36, but neither team is approaching anything like that right now. Not a running game. Houston depends a lot on dunks. That's why the percentage is high. Wouldn't that press, if Arkansas uses it, lead to a running game? No! Yes. Anders again. He didn't touch it. Anders again. Fell on his own guy. Well, mark down the number of 33 and the name of Benny Anders, sophomore. Out of Bernice, Louisiana. As Eddie Sutton has one final word for Moose Stubbing. Anders scored 12 points at the 34. Arkansas Houston put on the board. And the Cougars have a 34-27 lead at halftime.